to show you how to make this strawberry crisp recipe. At least that's what the author calls it. It's very much like a crumble or anything similar to that. So what you're going to need is a pound of strawberries, which would be about 450 grams, and we're going to wash them, uh, take the stems off, and quarter them. Next, you'll need a half cup of blanched almond flour. Now, the recipe does specify almond flour, not almond meal. In Australia, it's really hard to find some that are marked flour. It's essentially the same thing, whether they call it flour or meal. I think in some countries, the main difference is flour is a bit finer ground. Whatever you have should work, to be honest. Uh, but if you're at all worried about it and you have meal, you could certainly run it through a spice grinder if you want to make it a little bit finer. Uh, then the next thing you'll need is an eighth teaspoon of sea salt one tablespoon of butter, or you could use palm shortening, and half a cup of blanched slivered almonds. Okay, so I've got the oven preheating. You'll want it at 350 Fahrenheit, which is about 180 Celsius. Now this recipe calls for using five smaller ramekins, like half cup size. I don't have any that size. So I'm using these dishes, which are actually almost about two cup size. Uh, so mine's gonna actually be a bit lower down in here. If you use the recommended sizes, you might find yours is overflowing because the recipe asks you to pile the strawberries on until they actually are overflowing. And as they bake down, they might drip around the outside, which is why you wanna put them on a baking dish. Um, mine shouldn't do that because I'm using the four larger ones rather than the five tiny ones, but you can use whatever size works for you. Now I've already washed my strawberries and removed the tops and uh, any bad bits I've cut off as well. These weren't too bad, fortunately. So I'm gonna go ahead now and cut these in quarters. And just throw them in the bowl here and just keep going till I've got them all cut. Okay, so there they are all cut up. Now you'll note in my ingredients list, I didn't mention any sweetener and that's because the original recipe doesn't include any. The author is trying to avoid it, she said, um, and finds that when you get used to not having it, uh, you don't mind it. For those of you who would like it just a little bit sweeter, now's the time you could take just a little bit of your favorite sweetener and sprinkle it on, and then stir that through. So now you just wanna divide those berries amongst your ramekins or whatever dishes you're using evenly. So again, if you're using the half cup size ramekins, yours are gonna be overflowing. You're gonna to have to really pile them up. Uh, but that's fine because they will shrink down when they're in the oven. So now we're just going to pop these in our preheated oven for 30 minutes. So meanwhile, we're going to make the topping. Now the original recipe suggests doing this in a food processor, and you're certainly welcome to, but I'm just going to use a dough blender and do it by hand. So we'll start with the almond flour or almond meal, whichever you're using, the salt, and the butter. Now again, I'm going to do this by hand, just using a dough blender. If you haven't got one of these, you could even take a, two butter knives and just keep cutting across each other like this. That'll do the same thing. So you're just going to want to keep cutting the butter into your other ingredients until you get sort of like um, pea-sized little clumps. So this is kind of the texture you're after here. You want just little clumps of the butter to sort of be cut into it. You're not trying to turn it into a dough ball. You want it to say crumbs so we can sprinkle it on top. Now here again, if you want to, optionally, mix a little bit of sweetener in or just leave it as is, up to you. Now the last thing to add to this would be the flaked almonds. If you're using the food processor to make this, you can just throw them in there and pulse it a couple times just to rough chop them. You could throw them in certainly whole if you want to, but I'm just gonna give these a little rough chop so they're not quite so big. Now we'll just mix those in with the crumbs. Now we're just waiting for the strawberries to be done. Ooh, I can smell the strawberries. It smells wonderful. So that's been half an hour. I'm gonna leave the oven on, but pull these out. Okay, so they're very bubbly. And we're just gonna take our topping and divide that amongst each one. Now they're ready to go back in the oven. Now the recipe says for another 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to start checking mine at 15 just because with the bigger containers there's actually less in it. Uh, so they might get done a little sooner. We'll have a look. So that's actually been 30 minutes. I did keep my eye on it and they weren't getting too brown or anything. So I left it in long enough because I wanted to make sure the strawberries weren't too liquidy. That's looking really good. So there they are. I'm just going to let them cool. But as you can see, it's most of the liquid has sort of cooked away. It doesn't look overly liquidy, and that's to do with leaving it in for the full 30 minutes before you put the topping on, I think. Uh, but they smell delicious, and they look really tasty. 
It's really delicious just as it is, but you could also put some whipped cream or some ice cream on it, low carb, sugar-free, of course, and that would be extra special. I hope you enjoy it.